Um, this is Gloomhaven without the expansion. We're going to talk about just Gloomhaven, the board game, just the base game itself. Um, before we start the game, uh, I have to forward and admit that I did not technically complete, we as a group did not technically complete Gloomhaven 100%. As some missions and event cards were not unlocked with our playthrough, but for every mission, every character, and everything that we could play unlocked, we did. Every character finished their quest, some of them more than once. Every mission we could beat, we did beat, and every side mission that was unlocked, we also finished as well. We maxed out our town, had all the gear unlocked for purchase and so forth. We had everything. Like if you take Gloomhaven, the base game, we did everything we could, mission quests and everything. So what's the thoughts? Is this game worth spending $140 on to play? I'm sure you can find it for a cheap price on sale and so forth, but overall, does it contain enough enjoyment to make me say yes to this at a price point? To those that don't want to hear the whole reason behind my answer, I would just say yes, it's worth buying. And you can find it probably for $100 and less at this point sometimes. It's worth every penny in my opinion. Get it if you, if you have not, but that comes with a few prerequisites which I will get to at the end of my video. For those looking for a quick review, just want to hey, what's quick score? I want to hear you talk. I'd say it's 7 out of 10. Now let's talk about my tutor experience with the game and what the process was for me slash us as a game group. I was blessed to play this game consistently with two players, my wife, my friend, and I. This game started when me and my wife were dating and we finished the game, was married, and my wife was pregnant for a for kid, for a child that is now officially born. That's a long journey it was to play through. She joined us third of the way through the game and saw the conclusion, including the including the Forgotten Circle expansion and so on. So what about the game that makes me make such a statement about, hey, you should play it and get it if you haven't gotten it? Well, let's start with the role game content. There's a lot, there's a ton of content in the game. And I mean a lot of content from it's, I think it's like 12, I think it's more than 12 characters. Like, I mean, a ton of items, 95 plus missions to play through random scenarios that are ever and never ending and also a ton of road city events it's just a lot of content in the game and the amount of berries we ate and bears we encountered on the road events and rats we killed for a sweet old lady in the town is more than i can count with all that content was it appealing to go through an experience missions let's start let's talk about the missions there this is where it's a fault of mine not the games but i can hardly remember what the storyline was or the event cards and such in the game Always a little lost. I can't keep track of. I just mentally, I just can't keep track of the storyline of a lot of things. I was, I was always a little lost in what was happening. But thank goodness, my friend was able, my friend Brad was able to recap for me how we got the mission we are now. So he'd be like, "Hey, why are we here?" And he'd be like, "Oh yeah, because of this mission previously that, that brought us here." Overall, the missions were good. And there's a point about two thirds of the way through when you realize that a lot of the missions are just the same thing in a different skin. What I mean is, you just have to kill everyone to have a mission. That would have been a bigger concern, but the gameplay of combat and is so good that it was only noticeable during a map setup. When you set up the map, like, oh, our mission is to do this. The way the story is laid out in the mission book is a bit annoying as you have to set up the map. And as much as we try to keep information hidden, when more of the map is revealed, someone always knew information about what was ahead. There's an app I would recommend to help with that. And you could find the app, just go to Google Store or online. We started using an app and that really helped us negate hidden information like chests and what was behind different rooms events there's a ton of event, road city events to go through and i loved how you would just throw some of them away after completion I had a few issues with the events i had few issues i'm sorry a few issues of the events and i did like how they broke up the road events and city events it added a team decision element to the game that had a random outcome because normally as a team you kind of i want to say it's predetermined but you're like okay we know what how much damage you could possibly do with city road events, whatever you chose, you didn't know if it was good or bad, but it's like, as a team, we chose this, okay, it is what it is. Characters, a lot of characters, and each felt good in its own way. All characters felt different, had pros and cons of different situations. Now, some characters were definitely too strong, while, other, while a few characters felt a little underwhelming at times. But with all the different build options, even the same character could be played completely differently depending on the build route you took with the character uh, leveling cards and the equipment you decided to purchase from the market. I love the freedom of character creation and that the game provided. It was, it was fun. It really was a good time. And when I played, uh, I tried not to reveal my level 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9 cards. I just played the game and then I, as I got them, I would explore the character. Brad, he kind of looked ahead always, which is fine. We all play differently. Market. The market is a great addition that provides more and more powerful cards as you level up prosperity in the town. 
It was a great touch that always piqued our curiosity whenever we reached a new prosperity level. But to be frank, about two thirds of the game, and pretty much about two thirds of the game, in, we had everything unlocked in the town except the random legendary item cards. Full of different equipment, some really stuck out as amazing, while other equipment just too, just a stronger version of the previous one at a higher cost. So a lot of the cards were kind of e usually, oh, it's just this card, just a little better and a little higher cost. Equipment layout. I love how characters could carry a certain amount of items, and the higher your character level, the more equipment you can carry. Well, the more, it wasn't technically equipment, but the more um, items you can store in your, it's like a little satchel, a little bag. There's some great character equipment layouts that which work amazingly. It was a great system and it felt good. So like you can have one helmet, two single hand weapons, one, I mean, two single hand or one double hand weapon, armor, you know what I mean, shoes, and then you can carry like a bunch of equipment with you. Depending on your level. Really nice system. I, I had no issues with it. Combat. This is a strange topic. Or oh, the whole entire combat mechanism. This is a strange topic. As combat is also movement and interaction. Each character has a set of cards. The amount of cards they can play. And the longer you play, the more cards you lose. That is one of the ways you fail the mission. Because if you play longer, and you've probably seen a bunch of videos about this. You have to like exhaust the card. Take it out. And then your deck shrinks to nothing. If you have no cards to play, you pretty much get exhausted on that mission. But the card manager system is so genius, and oh my word, it was always fun trying to plan the proper use of, of a card, and hoping the next turn you have another great option available. And when playing with three players, it was just great working as a team to get the best overall outcome of the game, while not giving clear description of what you're doing. The system uses a top-down action of cards, and you only use one top and one bottom every turn. I don't want to get into the details, there's a bunch of videos you guys can watch that goes into it but it's by far one of the most enjoyable aspects of the game the actual core mechanism just enjoyed it a ton like a ton core movement combat is a blast and man it really hides some of the concerns i do have with the game it's that good like it was just like my mind was blown and i you know i mean i'm not a huge board game board gamer but man i was like this is great God, i can't believe somebody thought of this and they're in combat there's also something called combat modification deck I'm not a fan of random chance. I don't like dice games. I try to avoid them, even though I play Company Heroes, but that's a little different because that's kind of like your fault. And it's a game, and it's a gameplay style that I don't enjoy too much. Like I said, randomness. TI4, Twilight Imperium 4 combat to me is boring and it's just too random. I didn't I played TI4 once, and listen, I only played it once, so I can't I'm not saying the game is bad. I don't like rolling dice. I don't like chucking dice and seeing what the outcome is. It's just not my cup of tea. In this game, they went away from the dice and create a, a combat modifier system or a deck for each character and the enemy deck too. And oh my, it's really good. It's almost as genius as a combat deck itself that they created. And what makes it so good is that you can modify as your character levels up, you'll be able to take negative cards out of there and add higher cards. Each character modifies the deck differently also, which is just even greater. Like one character does this, this deck. No character does that. Just awesome. Every time you lock in a character, you're always looking at, well, how can I modify the modifier deck? At level 9, your modifier deck becomes not something that hinders you, but just brings even more destruction to the damage done. It's a great feature, and it really adds a lot to the game. Just loved it. It just made customization and your character experience amazing. When other characters leveled up, you always want to know, what do they do with the modifier deck? Four persons. There's a lot of pieces and setting up and cleaning up was just a huge waste of time. That's a big problem I had, but on any other one line, everybody has the same problem. We about midway through bought organizers from Walmart and used them for each unit. Playing this, playing the same group, we're able to reduce setup time down to a total of five minutes. We can literally choose a mission and in five minutes have the board and everything set up. But we played the same people. Literally sometimes two times a week, but once a week on Wednesday. So we got it down, this guy does this, you do this, I do this, and we're able to get maps out in five minutes. But if it was just the game and what it comes with, at times I could imagine you're running a 25 plus minute setting up. If you just get the core game and you're trying to set up from there, it, I mean, good luck. If you're lucky, 25 plus minutes. I'm thick. Just finding all the cars. Yeah. The map tiles are easy and the layout was based from the, on the mission book. The map tiles are pretty simple. They're labeled. Yeah, you know I mean, they don't look that bad either. I'm most concerned. It does take a lot of room, so be ready to, make, to clear some space when you want to play this game. And another thing is, if you don't beat the mission and you have space to leave the game out, just leave it out, which we did. Because if you have to pack it up and unpack it every time you play, oh man, that's would not be fun. Rulebook. The rulebook isn't the best, but definitely better than some games like we're talking about. Too Many Bones or Company Heroes. We will reference it a lot as there's a lot of moving pieces at different times of the game and also a lot of different character abilities that need clarity. 
They did provide a glossary in the book, which was a huge help in the back. So for the back of the rule book, there's a glossary. So if you're looking for a question of a certain ability, it had a general page to look at, the AI movement. And here's kind of one thing I didn't enjoy. So once some big some big mistakes were made, that we were slowly realizing this play for Phil was AI. We did not properly move them at times. That's why we didn't really stress about it. As we found out, we just fixed it. Because they, why is that? Because AI movement was badly explained. But overall, it was good enough to play the game without too much setback. Like the rule book isn't that bad, where it's like it's unplayable. But you know, I mean, it's not. It just it's playable. It just could have been better. My overall experience. So this game overall experience for us, for me especially, was really good. Some missions were unrealistic hard compared to other missions, but having a game to play for two and a half years of the same group was a blessing. And I couldn't think of another game at the time that provided such an experience. And I thankfully right now there's a lot of campaign games, but we haven't played one yet. So this is kind of like the one that we've finished. Now for my score, like I said, if you watched earlier, I'll give this game a 7 out of 10. It's a good game. It's not a great game. It's definitely not a well-polished game. Setting up is tedious, packing up is worse, many missions felt repetitive, and a few were just extremely unrealistic, like I mentioned earlier. AI movement was probably the thing that made the, that we made the most mistakes on, and it didn't come with the best rule book of explaining what, you know, I mean, how the AI should move. A large variety of items was great. I mean, you have a lot of items in the market. You have a lot of, you know, I mean, just a lot of items, but many of the items we never used and felt like it's just another item in the market. It's just like, oh, just, just an item to fill in like a large market. So, because some items look they like, well, I'm, there's no reason I've ever buying this. But the gameplay and the experience is hard for me to find another game. And this is kind of what I stress out, especially for my campaign group. We had, we are really excited for Frosthaven. And even if the negatives mentioned, it's still worth playing as it does provide a lot of great content for the dollar value and the customization of the characters is great. Now, if you came to me, says Slav, hey, if I'm glooming for 80 bucks, should I get it and try it? As long as you have a group that's willing to play it for maybe six months, I would say spend the 80 bucks. But if it's going to be just sit that one time play, maybe not. That kind of did that wrong. I don't. It's not a great solo game. I tried it once, just to just to get some coins. It's not fun. It's it's a group type of game because when you play solo, you have to play with two characters. That's the that's the problem with it. So you control different characters and you know information. It's doable, but I would not play it. I played solo, yeah, once or twice. Just I want to get some coin. I was like, I'll just play by myself because Brad is busy or something. So yeah, so that's my review of Gloomhaven. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. I'm not really sure why it's considered the best board game of all time on BGG. It just doesn't make sense to me. But hey, thanks for watching and uh till next time. I get a shield this turn. I get a heal this turn. Oh my god. Five damage, but yep. the then, so I get to flip again. Then you get the heal. Oh! So eight damage. Destroyed! No? I don't think so. Oh yeah. boy. How much life does the bear have? 20 something? Four. 17. 17, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. One away! Oh my gosh. I okay. get the heal for one. And then I am going to, I'll lose my strength and I'll oh, And then I'm going to just okay. disarm the bear. So he's going to get disarmed. Oh, okay. I'll just kill him. Well, that's fine. I can't do anything else because the bottom kill. one was to attack. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him dead. And babe, you lose your strength in two of them. That's right. Yeah, You're okay. supposed to lose it. Yep. And next is Brad. Oh, honestly, Brad, you're almost better off going for the trying to help Angie out at this point. Because this bears his harm. I'm not going to fight him. Don't think it heals though. I can't, I, but I wanted the, my heal on the bottom. Oh, uh, right yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still just going to heal you and I'm going to kill the bear. I still think that's the best play. Okay. And I'll recover some cards, try and get some low niche, run in there and help you out, Andy. Sweet. Okay. I'm a nice guy. Okay. So I'm going to attack the bear on strengthen for two. She used the light up. Ah, oh, it sucks. Hmm? It's all good. Well, I can choose that one if I want. So bring the light up because he's dead anyways. Yep, bear's dead. Bear's dead? Mm -hmm. Nice. Damn it.